If you're looking to lose weight or transform your body, do you need a body composition assessment? There's lots of people online talking about all these different tests they've had done, but is it worth it for you? Ultimately, whatever we measure as individuals should reflect what our personal goal is. So if you're somebody who's trying to lose weight to be in a certain size of clothing, then going off your clothes is probably a much better measure of your progression than going off and spending a lot of money on a test that gives you numbers that mean nothing towards your goal. You are better saving your money and buying more clothes. Today I want to talk about the different methods of body composition assessment. I want to talk about some of the benefits that you can get out of this and why I personally chose to have mine done. I'm going to show you which which method I had, it's not the best. I want to explain why I picked the method that I did. And I also want to talk about some of the pitfalls of getting these assessments done because I was shocked when I looked to book mine. So when we look at body composition, we're looking at different things that make up the body. And so there's different methods that you can have this done by that break the body into different compartments. So we have a two compartment model, we have a three compartment model. It's important to know before you book your test what it is you're interested in looking at. So there's no point in booking a method that only assesses your body fat if you want to know what your bone density is. Also, it's important to know why you're doing the test in the first place. So are you doing this as a one-off snapshot of your overall health, or are you doing this as a measure of your progression over time? Again, that will affect the method that you choose. There are lots of different ways of assessing your body composition, from those calipers that you see at the gym where people pinch your skin and then squeeze over it. Obviously, a lot of user error is involved in this method. You may have methods in your own home for assessing your body composition, like those scales with the metal plates on. You might have seen people going and having scans done. Let's break some of them down. Let's talk about the scales first of all, because lots of us do actually have these scales in our own home. If you use body composition scales at home that have the metal plates that you step onto, or if you go to a gym and they have a scale, it might even have handles. You can even book into very fancy clinics that have their own scale. This is a method of assessing body composition that's called BIA, which is Bioelectrical Impedance Analysis. What happens, whether it's in your own home on the scale or at the gym or at the clinic, is that when you step on it, it measures your weight and it sends an electrical signal through your body. Now, most of these scales will also ask you to input your height. And what it does is uses all these figures to calculate your likely body fat percentage. And it does that on the basis that the electrical signal it sends through your body will be resisted by fat more than other tissues because fat is insulating. So it can calculate your percentage body fat. BIA is notoriously unreliable. And one of the biggest reasons for this is it's massively affected by your hydration status. So if you are are somebody who wants to use this as your method of assessing body composition, then you need to try and control your environment as much as possible. You want to do this in the same conditions every time you use it. So maybe straight after you've been asleep, when you haven't eaten or drunk anything yet that day, before you've exercised, because if you exercise or drink something, it's going to affect all of your numbers. So essentially, you want to try and control as many variables as possible if you're using a BIA scale to measure progression over time. And this is why I find it quite shocking that if you approach some very swanky clinics, they will charge you hundreds of pounds to step on their swanky scales. And sometimes they don't even ask you to come having fasted or not drunk or at least recorded what you've done so you can control those conditions, so you can monitor them and compare them later makes no sense. But I wouldn't be paying anyone a lot of money to step on their scale. You are much better off with a scale in your local gym that at least you can use that same scale on repeat. So from an unreliable method of body composition assessment to the best method, the gold standard, this is DEXA scanning. And basically involves you going somewhere where they have a scanner that will pass two types of X-ray through your body. Now, this is a great method of having body composition assessment because not only does it tell you things like your body fat percentage, it can actually break that fat down into the body fat that's underneath your skin, the subcutaneous fat, which is mainly our aesthetic type fat. And then the fat around your organs, the visceral fat, that's the one that's really bad for your health. On top of that, it can tell you your bone mineral density. We use DEXA scanning on the NHS to assess people for osteoporosis. And you can also look at things like your lean tissue as well. It is a really good method of assessing your body composition, but the big drawback to DEXA scanning is that it involves radiation. And whilst it is fairly low dose radiation, some places will not give you a DEXA scan purely for assessing body composition. 
they will only do it for people who are elite athletes because of the radiation. Other places will irradiate you as much as you like. <laughs> you just need to pick your clinic carefully. If you are somebody interested in having a DEXA scan, then using a DEXA scan repeatedly to measure progress over time, given the radiation, is not likely the wisest thing, particularly if you're not an elite athlete. Instead, this is probably a great test to use once you're already in great condition or you're just looking to see, am I done now? There'd be no point in me having a DEXA scan right now because I'm trying to lose more weight, I'm trying to load my bones a little bit more with more exercise, and I'm still working on my health. So I don't want to use it to tell me what I probably already know. I want to use it when I'm at the point I want to get to. So I didn't have a DEXA scan right now. So what method did I use? Well, first I have to explain my reasoning and why I did this in the first place. So firstly, I like numbers, I like graphs and charts, and ultimately I'd had enough of weighing myself on the bathroom scales every day because I felt like that bread of behavior of trying to eat less at the end of the day to try and get a better weight on the scale in the morning, and I didn't feel for my mental health overall that that was a good way of assessing progress. I'm also in a position now where I want to put on a lot of muscle and only lose a little bit of fat, so actually measuring my weight probably wouldn't be reflective of the goals that I've actually got. And the third big point is that since losing the weight, my BMI is now 24, I'm aesthetically very happy with where I'm at, but I do still feel like I could potentially lose a little bit more to get healthier. The thing is, I don't really know. I'm just looking at myself in the mirror and BMI doesn't tell me everything that I need to know if I'm in the best condition. And there's plenty of people who are telling me, even though I still feel on the larger side, that, oh, you need to stop losing weight now. And I think it comes from a good place, but I don't think I'm actually there yet. So I wanted to know from a body fat percentage, how high is my body fat? Could I actually still be obese in body fat terms? And so I wanted a number that I can objectively say to people when they say, oh, stop losing weight, that no, 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 I have plenty that I could still lose. That is my goal. So I only really need body fat percentage at this point. I did consider having a DEXA scan because I've lost weight so rapidly and I thought, should I be assessing my bone health? But I need to get better at taking vitamin D every day. That's something that I do routinely become deficient in. And so there's still a few things that I could work on there myself before I get that assessment done. But yes, in the future, I'm gonna have a DEXA scan. For now, I want to monitor with something else, with no radiation, that I can keep doing until I get my body fat exactly where I want it. So what did I do for my assessment? I decided to go to Salford University. What amused me the most about this is that I looked on their website, they have all their prices and all the different things that they offer. They want you to ring them and speak to them first to check that you understand the test you're booking so you're only booking what's appropriate and then you get your test done by exercise scientists. You are going to the people who are most skilled and most appropriately skilled for these tests, and yet you tend to be paying far less than anywhere else <laughs> to have these tests done. It's crazy. So I went to Salford University and I booked him for something called a bod pod. Now the bod pod is the brand name of the machine that they use, but the method of body composition assessment is called air displacement plethysmography. And this is essentially a different version of something called hydrostatic weighing, which was a method of assessing body composition where you dunk someone in a tank of water so inside the bod pod, it calculates how much air you displace from inside the pod. And then using calculations based on your height and weight and density, it's able to estimate your percentage body fat. But instead of getting wet in a tank, instead you put your swimming costume on and a swimming hat on and you sit in a tank. And that's exactly what I did. And the reason that you wear a swimming costume and a swimming hat is to kind of get all the air out from between your hair so that it can really measure your exact size. And at the end of that, they gave me my body fat percentage. Now my body fat percentage, actually I'll tell you in a second, First, let's talk about the numbers that you get. So when it comes to what is a healthy body fat percentage for somebody, everyone will disagree slightly. Even within the same healthcare institutions, you tend to find that there's different ranges. The ranges will vary by up to 4% one way or another for what's fit versus what's athletic, etc. All of us, male and female, have an essential level of body fat that we need to have for our body to function. And so that range is higher in women than men because of childbearing, etc. But these are generally the ranges that you see. You have essential, you have athletes, you have fitness. 
then you have kind of just general health and then obesity. And as I said, all these numbers will vary slightly depending on where you read, even within the same institution. So my body fat came out at 29%, which I am really quite thrilled about. When I measured it on the BIA scale at my gym, it came out at 28%. And not that long ago, I stepped on a BIA scale and it came out at 45%. So I'm definitely feeling there's some progress there. But I also see that I do definitely have a margin there for losing more that could make me fitter and wouldn't be to my own detriment. One of the reasons, again, that I did this is that I like seeing those numbers come down. I get a lot of reward from numbers. That just works for me. And so seeing that is brilliant. Now, the thing with a bod pod is there's always going to be a degree of variability. And much like the BIA scales, you have to control diet and water before you go in the machine and keep those conditions the same for when you then use the machine later on. And there will be a degree of error of about two or three percent there. So you need to give yourself considerable time before you go back and use the bod pod again. So I might head back to it at the end of this year or the start of next year to see how things have changed. I do have a plan in place for fitness. It's not really focused on weight loss, but I'm now not worried about losing weight along the way. And I'm also excited for the next person who tells me to stop losing weight because I can say, no, you are wrong. <laughs> so that is the big benefit to me. Ultimately, body composition assessment can be really expensive. I paid 55 pounds, I want to say, for my bod pod. I can just check online if that's right. But I'm really happy I went to an academic institution. I also got a VO2 max for my cardiovascular health done at the same time. I'll talk about that some other time. Um, but I thought it was really worthwhile and it was really nice to talk in depth about these tests with actual exercise scientists. There are lots of other methods of testing your body composition. In particular, MRI I think is very exciting because there's no radiation involved in having an MRI scan, but they're usually just used for academic purposes at the moment. But hopefully that will come through as a more accessible method in the future. But it is a really interesting area. If you like your science, if you like your numbers, if you want to know exactly what makes up your body, if you're very focused on health and achieving optimal health, I do think body composition can be really be useful but I don't think everybody will get use from it so really assess whether or not it's worth you spending your money on. A lot of people spend money and then I've spoken to people who said I've had this assessment what do I do with this? If you're going to be one of those people then maybe it's just not a test that you need and that's great save your money but I personally have really enjoyed it. It's given me a better understanding of my body and ultimately it's given me the confidence now to push ahead with my plan and not worry about where I'm at and that I'm pushing too hard or losing too much weight. It can be really hard to gauge where you're at with your weight sometimes particularly because just looking in the mirror you can lose all perspective. So that's just a quick video today. Do check out your local academic institutions if you're interested in having an assessment. I think they're brilliant. And in the UK, we don't pay people for having qualifications. So yeah, that is it for today. Hope you all have a lovely day. See you soon. Bye.